Thanks for joining me again taking a look at some videos that might make your mind drift into the abyss. Today I wanted to set focus on the fake alien invasion and share my thoughts and reactions on it. As always, this channel, my videos, are for entertainment purposes only. It is up to you to come up with your own conclusions and discern fact from fiction. Just like to get your mind juices to think beyond the norm. There is a theory that at some point in the near future, global elites will use hidden and highly sophisticated technology to simulate an extraterrestrial invasion on Earth in order to assert their dominance and conquer the world. When the staged extraterrestrial invasion begins, a false messiah will emerge amidst the chaos in each country, and this individual will have the power to protect the people and halt the invasion. The false messiah will then become the leader of the new world religion, ultimately uniting the world under a single religion as the Antichrist, as described in Apocalypse. The increased presence of UFOs in recent years is seen as a sign that global elites are training their system to be flawlessly prepared for the final invasion. Additionally, the growing development of advanced technologies, such as artificial intelligence and 5G, is believed to be aimed at perfecting a simulated extraterrestrial invasion that will deceive the entire planet into believing in the false messiah. Think this video is referring to Project Blue Beam or something related to that. And for those that don't already know, Project Blue Beam is a conspiracy theory that suggests a covert government operation to deceive the public through advanced technology. It alleges that a staged event involving holographic projections, false religious phenomena, and the use of advanced mind control would be used to manipulate and control the global population. So a staged alien takeover even may lead civilization into a new world order. I think anything is possible and I would not totally dismiss it. And that is why I always keep an open mind and try to find the likely facts with given information and figure out my own conclusions. Look at that, looks like the end of the world. What is that? President Ronald Reagan in 1987 said something that towed the line between deeply prophetic and deeply weird. And he said it at the United Nations. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Ronald Reagan wishing an alien invasion on Earth because of the kumbaya effect it would have on relations among nations. One of the truly weirdest things he ever said in public. Also, it's kind of coming true. That story's next. Project Bluebeam. By far the scariest years we may see.
This conspiracy achieved its status in 1994 by a book that was written by Serge Monast. In the book, the writer describes how the United Nations, in collaboration with NASA's technology, will unite the whole world under a new false religion. But how? There will be, supposedly, an alien invasion, which is all part of the whole show, of course. And one day, a hero, a god, will come from the skies and destroy these aliens. And us, human beings, we will not believe our own eyes and start to worship this god. Whatever this god orders will happen. One world order. This is called the Project Bluebeam. Now, I don't believe that they have the technology that is capable of deceiving us yet. But in the near future, they might very well be able to make them. If you are a Muslim or a Christian, this whole show must ring a bell. This is the person we have been warned about more than a thousand years ago. If this happens, this is the Dajjal, the Antichrist. Be prepared. It's the first time humans have seen aliens. Everyone is looking forward to it because they not only provide free alien technology to mankind and cured all human diseases and transformed the earth into a paradise in the hearts of mankind. The status of the other party has long been like a god. But when mankind really saw the appearance of aliens, everyone was first in disbelief. Then they were horrified because the image of the other side is too horrible. Covered with blood red scales, with two horns on their heads and wings on his back, the image of a legendary demon. But because of the help they gave to mankind, people eventually chose to accept the alien domination of the earth and continue to enjoy all that they have to offer. But the scientist Roy soon realized that something was wrong. After the arrival of the aliens, science and technology have been stagnant. The human race has never invented anything again. He rushed to tell the top government officials about his discovery. But the top government officials were not impressed because now with the alien technology, humans don't need to do anything on their own. And then he told Roy that the aliens wanted him to catch one of every animal on earth. Roy asks why, but the senior government official said he didn't know. Roy became even more suspicious. In order to find out what the aliens were up to, he began to read all kinds of books. Finally, he made an amazing discovery. Aliens had visited the Earth in prehistory. That's why their images were found in the books. And the reason why he was called a demon by his ancestors. He must have done something terrible to Earth. That's when his girlfriend told Roy. The aliens will be hosting a party on Earth tomorrow. All the people who will be there will be high-ranking government officials. And he's invited. Roy asked his girlfriend to take him to the party. At the party. Roy questioned the aliens in front of everyone, why they're blocking human technology and taking animals away. But the aliens didn't hide it. Instead, he said he was doing it for the sake of mankind. He's blocking technology to keep mankind away from dangerous forces that could destroy them, and that he had already solved all the problems on Earth. All humans need to do is enjoy the good life. And he took the animals. He just wanted to bring them to his planet for display. There's no ulterior motive. Not sure if this is based on some book or what, but it sounds sort of familiar but speaking on the technology. With all the UFO ways to maneuver in the skies, that would be some society changing tech for sure. And with humans not needing to do anything on their own, I think with AI, we are headed that direction. Sounds like a total dream. But then again, it could be a nightmare in disguise. UFO? UFO? They're stopping. What is that? <laughs> I don't know what that Look, is, but they're one just disappeared. Around. They're like moving. Around. What? I told you I got a good thought. It's like overgrazed, bro. Yeah, your gunshots, man. Oh.
Alright, so at the beginning they're talking about the lady seeing something or asking if it's in the tractor or the forklift. I believe it's inside the tractor you can see two dark shadows with glowy eyes. I'm gonna put it in black and white, maybe that will help a little bit. Give me one second, right there. This video was about an incident reported in the suburbs of Vegas. If you haven't seen the video, I made one a while ago here. It's crazy because I think that whole incident is shrouded in mystery, even until this day. Whatever came about on this, I'd for sure like to know. You can see right in the center, you can see two dark shadows sitting. This one is gonna blink in a second, you'll see it right there. He blinked, uh, they're both sitting there, they move, but ever so slightly, you can't really notice. Um, uh, and they're just sitting there. I, I'm not saying they're aliens, I'm not saying that this is a true video, but that is kind of shady. I'm gonna put a picture here with uh, um, a silhouette in red so that you can see what I'm looking at. Let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, so I was a conspiracy theorist before I gave my life to Christ because ultimately everything led me to Jesus. But one of the most popular conspiracies was Project Bluebeam, which is real and that the government or satanic elite has these machines that can create these holographic hologram images that look really real and that they're going to use these for all kinds of psyops and um you know fake alien invasions and all of these things but here's the thing and this is what i want y'all to actually ponder is that what if project bluebeam is a psyop for a psyop and that actually God is real and he's gonna show mighty signs and wonders. He's going to confound the entire earth with his majesty and his miracles and his wonders. And then the government is gonna say, those angels aren't real, it's Project Booby. But it actually is real. It actually is really angels. Why you don't know what Project Bluebeam really is? In 1994, a man named Serge Monist wrote a book in which he detailed that the United Nations are going to create a fake alien invasion. The goal would be to make people lose all hope and accept that they were going to die. For what you say. For the coming of the Antichrist, he would pretend to save us from the fake alien invasion of man who came from the sky, a fake god. Which would make most of humanity follow him, pray to him, accept him as god, it's how they would start the one world order. This is for the people that say I don't believe in aliens. It's Project Blue Bean isn't believing in the Antichrist, as ridiculous as aliens coming to earth. government is admitting they believe that there are crafts that are operating that are outside of their understanding of physics this is a quote from the Pentagon there was off-world vehicles not from this earth astrophysicist Eric W Davis who spent years working as a consultant for the Pentagon UFO program on what he called 
off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. Mm -hmm. In other words, spaceships. I've talked to multiple pilots that have had encounters. I don't know if it's ours, if it's a drone that we don't tell them about that moves in a way that defies our understanding of physics because it doesn't operate on a propulsion engine. It operates on something that's completely new and unique. And there have been thoughts about how a new gravity-based propulsion system would work for decades. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency now formally blowing the whistle on secrets he says no one has ever shared publicly before. He is speaking one on one with investigative reporter Ross Coldhart reporting for News Nation. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will. Uh, it's probably not the right parlance, but uh, no kidding, non human exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. And this whole story could be preparing us for what is to come in the future. So the question is, is he a crisis actor? Or is he actually whistleblowing what the government is hiding? I'd love to live to see it unfold. So what the fuck is this? This big ass hologram, and it's for entertainment purposes only. Getting very much blue bean vibes here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this happened in Japan though. I need y'all to keep your eyes open. Y'all third eye open. I know that y'all are entertained by this big ass hologram at this Japan sporting event. Hooray! So now we know they have the technology. We know what the conspiracy theories are about this such technology. One plus one. It equals two. Hey, hey, that's all I'm saying. I have never known them to be violent or hostile. When I was in the military, I had access to maybe six, seven different species. I know him as Corona, and he always told me, Corona with a K. He's from a planet that's approximately 100 light years from planet Earth. They can take on a humanoid form and communicate with you through ball transfer. We see them as the creature hiding under our beds. No, they are so much like us. Are they benevolent? Yeah, I'd like to hope if an invasion happens, it is for benevolent reasons. There was a treaty that was put in place in 600, 700 AD thereabouts, where these ETs decided they could no longer walk among us. The good and the bad ones all made an agreement. We need to leave these people alone. We need to back off. They have now voted to repeal that. The latest intel is they're not going to do this in some sort of mass sighting at first, that they're going to begin by making mental telepathic contact to people, either in, in their heads as they're awake or in dreams, and that those contacts will be the precursor to actual in-person experiences. You can't believe this. This was found in Washington. Look up in the sky. If you see anything, record it and post it here. We have to spread the word. This is wild. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for your patience while we were delayed a little bit. I have a few things to talk about up top, and then we'll get right to your questions. Uh, so first of all, to add to information already provided earlier by the White House, at the direction of the President of the United States, fighter aircraft assigned to U.S. Northern Command successfully took down a high-altitude airborne object off the northern coast of Alaska at 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today within U.S. sovereign airspace over U.S. territorial water. On February 9, North American Aerospace Defense Command detected an object on ground radar and further investigated and identified the object using fighter aircraft. 
The object was flying at an altitude of 40,000 feet and posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flight. U.S. Northern Command is beginning recovery operations now. U.S. Northern Command's Alaska Command coordinated the operation with assistance from the Alaska Air National Guard, Federal Aviation Administration, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We have no further details about the object at this time, including any description of its capabilities, purpose, or origin. The object was about the size of a small car, so not similar in size or shape to the high-altitude surveillance balloon that was taken down off the coast of South Carolina on February 4th. In 1992, Kathy O'Brien stood up in front of the world and predicted almost exactly what we are dealing with right now in regards to UFOs. But she was telling us to beware because there's a chance that they aren't actually aliens and it's all the result of Project Bluebeam. This was absolutely mind-blowing. Just check this shit out. showed me as Office of General Dynamics a then top secret stealth. Here was this triangular stuff that wasn't in any of the school books, wasn't being talked about anywhere. It looked like a spaceship to me. I'd never seen anything like that. And everything that Jay Bennett Johnson was doing and he was involved in certainly was alien to me. So it was easy for me to accept the idea that what was happening was in fact being perpetrated by aliens. But what I am saying is that my, it was my experience that these were people claiming to be aliens. If, we, if there's a reality out there pertaining to any alien influence, we need to sort out the government misinformation and disinformation and mind manipulation techniques that they're using. I know for a fact that the plan is to make all of us feel totally helpless that what's happening is beyond our realm to affect because we've been taken over by aliens, that our independence day is dawning. This report comes from a shadowy Pentagon department that was shut down in 2012. The disclosure movement has been hijacked by people parroting the narrative and the script being written by these black projects. I would say 90 plus percent of everything that's going to come out is false. It's a great cover story for all kinds of criminal activities. Blame it on the aliens, right? If we are being visited by interdimensional beings, we should know about it. This has the big disadvantage of the truth being much more unbelievable than the fiction. It's the crash retrievals that are the Rosetta Stone for solving the UFO cover-up. The implications of this is the difference between extinction-level civilization versus one that's going to take off to the stars. Oh, what People think that the U.S. government builds stuff. They contract. It's called WFO, work for others. And in 1993, I was at the Wrigley Mansion in uh, Phoenix. They wanted me to come to a meeting very late at night. He says, look, if you want to deal with the, this issue, of these technologies, the UFO issue, you don't need to talk to the president, the CIA director. They don't know anything, and they're not going to know anything. You should be talking to people like us. We're the ones who are running the WFO. We're tied into certain, I'm quoting, orders of Jesuit priests that are working on the technology transfer. We have the supercomputers that bank, back up the banking system, and where we can get a lot of money just from transactions where they're odd amounts. This sort of hybrid entity, partially covert, unacknowledged government programs, but a big part of that is then outsourced to big corporations, covert contractors, and, and other organizations. So that's kind of what developed in the post-World War II era, and it still is how, this is, how the operation runs. At the end of the day, the question lingers. Is a fake alien invasion even within the realm of possibility? Could an elaborate scheme of global proportions truly be orchestrated to deceive the masses, making us believe we're facing an imminent alien threat and compelling us to blindly follow directives we might otherwise question? It sounds like the stuff of science fiction, but consider this. The past has shown us instances where individuals have taken steps they believed were for their own safety, even when those steps seemed extreme. The reference here to a certain jab 
reflects the current climate where fear and uncertainty can influence our decisions. And then there's the intriguing analogy of the moon landing conspiracy. If, by any chance, the moon landing were indeed faked, it would require a vast number of individuals within the conspiracy, each playing a role in this intricate deception. It raises the unsettling idea that sometimes, the truth can be obscured, even by a small group with a big agenda. This leads us to ponder the profound influence of fear, uncertainty, and a desire for security in the human psyche. The idea of orchestrating a fake alien invasion taps into our inherent vulnerability to fear, a powerful motivator. Imagine, for a moment, a scenario where a carefully constructed narrative convinces the world of an impending extraterrestrial invasion. The fear and uncertainty that would grip the global population could become a potent tool in the hands of those who seek to control or manipulate. History is replete with examples of how societies have responded to fear, and the outcomes are not always in the best interest of the general populace. It's essential to keep in mind that the power of information and its manipulation cannot be underestimated. In an era of information saturation, we are bombarded with narratives, and distinguishing fact from fiction can be challenging. The influence of media, technology, and those who control the dissemination of information is a force to be reckoned with. Questioning the official story, seeking the truth, and staying vigilant are vital to navigating the intricate web of a reality where not everything is as it seems. As we contemplate the possibility of a fake alien invasion, we must also reflect on our capacity as individuals to discern the truth amid the noise of a rapidly changing world. The future will reveal whether these questions remain shrouded in uncertainty or whether the truth emerges from the shadows. Yeah. <laughs>